Hey guys, I am trying something a little different. Um, I wanted to bring a more casual approach to this video. It, it is going to be a fountain pen collection update. And I'd done one before in the past. Uh, I think it was maybe last year sometime, but it didn't really include my whole entire fountain pen collection. And that is because um, I have some that I do not use, um, well, because maybe they were like, um, too big for me to write with, it was uncomfortable, but I didn't really rotate it in my collection, so I didn't include it in my last video, but this video today is going to be full collection, so anyways, um, aside from that, I am drinking one of my favorite tea brands and it is, I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it is Bel Bessler, uh Green Tea and they have actually um, a lot of different types of teas like fruit teas, um, green tea, white tea, uh, so and it, they're known for having it um, packaged in really fancy like tin boxes as gifts so I believe they do consider themselves premium but I'm sorry this is not a promotion it's not sponsored by Basler Tea but I wish this was but I love tea in general and I um this is going to be a longer video so grab your favorite tea or let me know what your favorite tea is down below because if you follow me on Instagram you know I'm I call myself a tea addict because I'm pretty much drinking almost every day. I try not to sometimes or I try to drink herbal tea on the weekends just so I have a break from all the caffeine. Um, but mostly I'm drinking tea every single day. Uh, I do need that caffeine, a little bit caffeine boost. But when I'm really feeling like I, I, I need to wake up um, or I'm really sleepy and no tea is going to work, then I do go for a little bit of uh, coffee, but very watered down, instant coffee. That's how I like it because I get jittery really easily. So I, all my coffee that I drink is very watered down and I m might do that maybe a couple times a month. Uh, so I'm definitely uh, a, a, an avid uh, tea drinker. So um, definitely if you love tea and you like fruity teas, but you don't like it when it's too heavy on the fruit, um, and it's subtle and just a uh, tinge of sweetness, but you still taste that green tea, then definitely check out Basler tea because that's what I love about them. It's very subtle, the flavor. It's not it's not like you're drinking f like fruit, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And there's no weird aftertaste. So I just love it. Um, so sorry, aside from that, this is going to be a lengthy video where I'm just going to be talking um, a little more in depth. Uh, I know my videos have been six minutes under 10 minutes most of the time because I know a lot, not a lot of people um, like to sit through long videos so that's why I've done it like that but this time I'm going to take my time and spend some time with you guys and yeah just enjoy uh, showing you my fountain pens so let's get started this one is my superior labor uh, what do you call this? Pen pouch, I think. And I got this at Wonder Pens. And um, I have a video unboxing of it. I'll link it up below. Uh, but it's it's working out pretty good. I do find it a bit cumbersome to... I don't know. I mean, it's probably just me to just... Because I, I use these every single day. Pretty much reaching for this multiple times a day. And I think I like the one they came out with after, and it's called the uh, Superior Labor Tool Pouch. Yes, and it's the smaller version kind of uh, of the uh, pen roll, and I saw that, and I don't know if they're going to restock that, but I have my eye on it. Uh, this one, though, right now, um, like it's, it does, it, it, it's, it's flexible, but it's, it's kind of warping on the side because I have pens on both sides so um, yeah right now I'm still using this I do love it it's it's really uh, luxurious and I just love the leather on it like superior le leather is amazing um, 
and uh, I guess I'll start with the inked version or yeah all right so so basically my inked versions are the ones I use a lot these are the ones I love um, okay so let's see so my first ever fountain pens can you guess which one it is my first fountain pen is in here my first ever fountain pen is the Twisby Eco. If you guessed that, you are correct. So this one, I am dedicating it to my Hobonichi five-year journal. And I'm using uh, Yamabudo ink in here for the whole entire year of uh, 2021. And um, let me just show you quickly. Let me just grab it. Um, I feel like it will uh, separate the entries by year very nicely if I use a different uh, fountain pen, uh, you know, every year, or sorry, different ink every year. So, so far, I'm on my first year, and as you can see, it's all Yamabudo, and then next year will be at the bottom, and I think I'll use maybe a blue ink, and... It'll just be more consistent that way. So I'm am you sticking to that for this year. So that's great. It's um yeah, so as I said, this is my first uh fountain pen and yeah, it's very, very um economical, you know, it's great for beginners, and I just love the fact that it is demonstrator, which is like all Twisby pens, um, but I love it. I love seeing the window and I was fascinated by that and that's why I chose this pen as my first ever pen. I definitely don't regret it. I love it. Uh, Twisby, you know, it's true what they say. Uh, Twisby is a workhorse. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't give you any hard stops. It's very smooth and it doesn't really dry out the ink on the inside. I mean, I haven't had any ink dry out, so um, I haven't had, can't really speak to that, but uh, it is working very well. And this is in the extra fine yeah. because I usually like fine, but um, I, the, f the extra fine on this, it feels like a fine for, uh, I think, Japanese pens yes so um i love that and i mean i'm sure you guys have seen a swatch of yamabudo if not this is the ink swatch i have and it's really beautiful so there's that um okay so next up i should go oh, i really don't know what my next pen was it might have been this. I went to Japan uh, about three years ago or two. Uh, and then I picked up this Traveler's Factory uh, brass fountain pen. I feel like this was my second. Might have been. Um, I do love it. and But it's not as smooth as the Twisby, I feel like. Um, and I, I might just have to clean it out. But... Um, I think I might have gotten some uh, debris in it when I was um, last filling it. I was wiping it with a towel, but I might have to clean out the tines. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's still really good. It's just sometimes I do find some fibers uh, in there. So I kind of just like, if I see it, I just take it out. But yeah, I still need to study how to do that without damaging anything and I haven't had the time to study that and do research um, but I know there's like these mesh wires you can get that are softer than the brass sheets or yeah more gentler than the brass sheets so um yeah I might have to look into that but so far it's still writing for me so I'm not really complaining um, but I love this it's uh, the whole brass um, traveler's notebook aesthetic um, and I have, um, I have this ink, I have this, um, 
Ferris Wheel Press in Moss Park Green. Uh, inked up in this one right now. And if you're curious, I do have a swatch. Like, I hope you guys want to see the swatch. It's right here. It's really, really soft uh, moss green. I just love it. Well, it's actually um, named after a park in Toronto. So that's another reason why I love the brand. It's basically a homage to Toronto. Um, they even have like the area code on the nibs of their fountain pens, but I don't have that pen and I don't. I don't plan on getting it, but uh, we'll see. Um, so that's what I have. Oops. And I uh, just put it on top of my clip here. And it just fits together very well. And I use this for my um, morning pages. Okay, so I'll put that back there. So the next up is I went like to Wonder Pans and I checked out a lot of pens and I just love pocket pens and I think then I have been uh, collecting these well not really collecting but just the colors I really liked so this one or oh, sorry I think I got this first this one kind of has a pinkish tone to it and I do love it um it's the macchiato uh Coeco sport and I think I've had this the longest Actually, no, I lied. I have one in here that I've had the longest, but this was my second Koeko. And I need to clean out the uh, threads. It's kind of dirty, but what are you going to do? Um, I love it. It's very lightweight. And I'm sorry if I'm going into too much detail, but um, I feel like I haven't done like a full on length, lengthy uh, fountain pen video. So... Uh, hopefully this is not too long for you, but, uh, yeah, um, I'll try to make it quick though. So, Coeco Sport, love, 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 love this macchiato color, and I love Coeco. Um, it's not the smoothest nib, in my opinion. It's decent though. It's decent and sufficient, and it's great for that. Um, like, it's very economical, so I can't complain there. So... And then recently I got the Mandarin, Frosted Mandarin, I think it's called. I just love this. It's like my one of my favorite colors. Um, and so summery. So, I mean, I haven't used it yet because I need to get a fine nib on this. And I don't have a fine. I have a medium and I don't like it. Back in the day when I started, I really liked how my writing looked with broad nibs and medium nibs. But now... A few years into the fountain pen hobby, I realized I really like extra fine and fine because I write so small. So I still need to pick it up. They were out of stock, but I need to pick up uh, a fine and replace it because I just can't use it. Um, yeah, I don't have any more spare nibs for this. So, so that's sad. I mean, it's always sold out these days. Um, Okay, so I'm going to leave that last. And then I use this a lot. This is my... I have an unboxing of this. I'll link it up uh, on top. And this one is a Sailor uh, entry-level fountain pen called Le Cool Line. This one is in ro rose quartz. And it has like little sparkles. And it's very reminiscent of rose quartz crystal. Uh, perfectly. And uh, I'm loving it. And I think I'm one of the lucky ones that got this out of the box writing perfectly smooth. Uh, no hiccups and no scratchiness. So I'm very lucky with this pen. And uh, this is like kind of like middle, I guess, range? Middle, mid, mid, lower range pen? Um, well, it wasn't very expensive for a sailor, I have to say. So, um... I just love the aesthetics of this pen. That's what really got me. It's so pretty. Uh, and I, I, oh, and I have, what do I have in it? What do I have in this? I think I definitely have a pink one. The pink one I have. Oh, I have a Lady Rose in here right now from Ferris Wheel Press. And I only have the sample. I don't have a bottle of all of these inks, but 
so that's what I'm using here and it's going to be kind of like my dedicated pink ink fountain pen uh, and then this one a while back I got this it's the uh, platinum uh, pre found pre fountain I don't know it's French but it's uh, platinum and this is a fine uh, sorry, this is a medium. Uh, Sailor only has medium, fine in that. So this one is uh, fine. And I got this because it was pretty. It's cheap. <laughs> it's a cheap pen. I'm not going to worry about if I break it or toss it around. But I wanted like a green uh, fountain pen to put like my green inks in. But right now, um, I have a yellow tone ink right now. Okay, so before I get to that... Um, I had an issue. I, I didn't pick up the the um, converter for this. So it did come with some blue ink in the box. And I just used a syringe. Oh, is this cracked, guys? Oh my god, it's already cracked? It's already cracked, I think. The, the, the threads, you can see. I cracked it already. Oh, wow. Is it? Or is that just water? Okay, no, I don't think it's a crack. I think it's just a reservoir, kind of like with residual, like water, I think. And yeah, because I just put this new, refilled this ink today. But anyways, I put in, I just took a um, syringe and took out the old ink that I was using, like a green ink I didn't like. I think it was Bungu Box. But now I have the ink I want in there and it's kind of yellowish ink. And I will show you that in a minute. And I inked it out, haven't written with it yet, but I flushed the pen out before I changed the color. So this will be sort of like housing the colors I don't use that often in here uh, for like journaling and stuff. So I'll show you the color I have. I love it so much. And I only have the samples, so I need to get the actual bottle, I think. So this is the uh, Rishizuku Inahou. Oh, sorry, Inahu. I don't know, ho, I don't know, but the, it's this beautiful, like, green, yellow tone. I want to say it's, like, um, retro, like, I don't know, but it's just really nice, really nice, um, yellow, I just love it, so, um, yeah, so I have that in there. And let's see, next one. Here is my latest acquisition that I'm really excited about. <laughs> it's the Twisby Mini. And I've had this uh, on my list for a long time, but I wasn't sure if they were going to come out with um, come out with a gold, rose gold version of the Mini. I know they have one, the black of the, the, the Diamond 580 with rose gold, but... I don't like how like long the pen is and I really like mini pens so I was waiting for a long time but I don't think they're coming out with it uh, anytime soon so I ended up getting the uh, black silver version of this mini and I don't regret it I haven't written with it yet but I just inked it up today um, I inked it up with Sailor Sailor 224 uh, hold on, which one is it? Sailor. Uh, I inked it up with Sailor 252. It's kind of like a pinkish gray tone. So, yeah. So I'm going to use that more for like just general writing purposes in my planner and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So love i wanted a gray one but i don't have gray ink i ran out of the sample so i really 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 want to go with like buy the bottle so i can ink it up with this irishuku uh kirisami this is such a beautiful like a lightish gray um that's kind of dark enough to read so i love writing with this and i it's sold out right now so go figure but it's on definitely the bottle is on my list and then I will ink it in here, but I love it. It's so pretty. Um, yeah, this is like, I just love how it, 
has the threading for the cap at the back and it's perfect perfect balance for me um, I like capping my pens and uh, for the eco I definitely cannot cap this because it wasn't I don't think it was meant to it's way too uh, top heavy top heavy over here so it feels very awkward so I can never cap this one uh, so yeah but I won't be getting rid of this because it's my first fountain pen so but this one in love with this and yeah, so that's all I have inked up at the moment and kind of like the number that I like to keep at. I don't want to ink too much. Um, these two, I don't even know what inks I have in here, um, but it's definitely uh, this one is uh, I bought the sample of a like a pink ink, but it was way too light. But this one is in that one. And then I don't know if I. And then I got cream or earl gray in like this one. And then I have, um, I don't remember what's in the other one. Don't remember what's in that one. But anyways, that's all I have right now. Okay, so let's move on to the second. I know this video is getting way too long. I hope it's not going to be an hour. But uh, um, so this one is gallon leather and I got this from Goulet Pens. Um, I've never ordered from them before. This was my first time and this leather I have mixed feelings about it. It's very it feels very like there's no texture. It looks like there's texture. When you touch it there's no texture. It's completely it feels like paper. I don't know. Just very dry leather. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I do have mixed feelings about this. Um, I thought about selling it, so I don't know how long I'm going to keep this for, but I mean, it does the job for now. Um, it's just really tight. Like, I I don't see me putting in my, like, favorite, most uh, favorite pens in here because it does, it creates, like, a pressure between the pens um, when you close it. So, um, I am keeping the pens I don't use in here. Okay, so um, let's see. So let's start off with this was my probably my second fountain pen after the Twist B. And this is also a demonstrator. And this one's a broad nib. No, it's not. It's a medium, medium nib. And it's uh, Koeko Sport. And that really drove me nuts. Uh, if you saw my previous fountain pen video, you know that I cannot get this out. And now it's been years and it's just really stuck in there. It's just, I'm not even going to bother anymore. Um, someone uh, previously mentioned that I can, you know, use a eraser, back of a pencil, an elastic band. But I tried. I really don't want to do that again. I, I, I sat there for so long and I just can't get it out. Um, maybe I'll just bring it to to Brandon at uh, Wonder Pens when everything is, you know, blowing over um, and safe to go in because he did say bring it over, he can try to get it out, but I keep forgetting to bring it when I go. Uh, so that's that and I haven't been using this and it's really sad. Um, so I'm not really feeling this anymore, but I so I keep it in here. Uh, this one is from AliExpress and I use this to do my swatches. Um, and it comes with like a nib, but I haven't tried that yet. So, I mean, I, I just like to use this just to do swatches, ink samples, and, but I do love the color. It's, I feel like when it's autumn, I'll take it out and maybe s swap the glass nib out for the actual metal nib and put some, I don't know, uh, dye mine, uh, oak in it autumn oak and I think it'll be really really pretty for autumn so uh so I'm keeping that I love that uh and then this one's also from AliExpress this is the Jin Hao it's a wooden I don't even know is this wood yes it is and it's like a, a hooded nib and actually writes really 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 smooth very surprised because it was ten dollars or under $10, I really don't remember. Uh, yeah, I just, 
don't like the metal cap at the back. It doesn't really fit the aesthetic that well, but uh, I've used it and I like it. And I don't know if, you know, I'll use it anytime soon, but it's in my collection because I wanted to try out uh, Jin Hao. Okay, so on to the right, this one, uh, this one, very, I got this really early on. This is the Lamy, uh, it's not the Lux, it's the Lamy, um, I really don't remember, sorry. It's, yeah, it's not the, like, Lux, what do you call it? It's not the Lux version, it's a medium it's right under that um yeah my memory i don't remember but i have a love-hate relationship with lamy now i've had a really bad experience with the nibs i purchased uh this one uh sometime this year i think because it's pink and it's you know i really love it it's so beautiful but the nib i was afraid this would happen and it did happen the nib was very scratchy I could not write with it and gold spot had to send me a replacement and it's slightly better so um, but uh, I just haven't reached for it after that so I mean eventually maybe if you know I'm into the, the feeling the pink then I will use it again um, but yeah this one uh, yeah was my first Lamy no I had a Lamy uh, rose gold like LX, yes LX, but there was a huge um, unevenness of the paint, uh, so I returned that. Uh, but it was so smooth, um, and I fell out of fountain pen world because I had a bad experience with my first Lamy. And that threw me off for like two, three years, uh, not using fountain pens because of that bad experience. But uh, I came back into the game, I think, two years ago. No, wait, did I? Yes, I think so. I think right before the pandemic. Yes, right before the pandemic, I got into fountain pens again. And then I went out and bought this. And um, I also had a problem with the nib. And... Uh, so I've had so many problems with the nib. They, this is a I bought a replacement and it's it's okay now, but it's I don't know. I heard mixed mixed things about Lamy. It's uh, a lot of problems with their nibs. Um. Anyways, so I'm done with Lamy for now. Like I'm done. Uh. Anyways, um. I, I probably just got really unlucky. So I know they're a great company and everything. So, um, okay, so Noodlers Inc. This is my first Noodlers and it's a flex nib. And this was, I forgot the name of this. It's not the Ahab, it's the other one. Um, can't remember. Um, so I got this, you know, uh, also when I started, first started fountain pens. And I don't use it that much because I don't know, the nib is. Not as flexible as I liked. Maybe I need a gold flex nib. I don't know, but I need ultra flex or something. Um, is yeah. I think I'm just not very experienced with uh, adjusting this. I mean, I've taken it apart many times and put it back together, uh, but haven't been able to you know get it perfectly smooth. But it works. It's decent. Uh, and then this one is my i wanted to try the kakuno pilot kakuno and uh, i bought this on amazon and this one is an extra fine and yeah i just thought it was cute um and I purchased it so but it's extra fine and it's actually hairline thin and way too thin for me i might use it for drawing purposes but or i might just give it away um I don't know so I'm not using that right now because it's way too thin so this is all the pens that I'm not using uh, but stored away in my cut it's in my collection so um, keeping it in here okay now this video is like probably an hour long 
Okay, now for the pens that I didn't include in my last video, but it, okay, sorry. Sorry, before I do that, one more like top of the line, my favorite, my most expensive found pen. Can't forget that, but it's had, it's in its own box still. And that is the Pilot E95S. And I got this on, for my birthday this year. And it's a birthday pen, so I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just thought it was a little more special. Uh, this one is in, like, I didn't want to put it in this uh, because I didn't want to, like, compress it. Uh, just worried. So I keep it in here for now. I mean, it was in there for, uh, like, quite a bit of time, but... Um, yeah, this one is so soft and so, so beautiful and feminine. So elegant, very vintagey. I love it. It's again, it's a pocket pen, so I um, totally love this. My first gold nib. Uh, this one is in the uh, fine, and it's lovely to write with. I have no problems. It came really smooth out of the box, but I'm scared of damaging it or getting dust in the tines so i'm not really using it as much as i as i would like because i don't want to scratch the cap it's hers it's very easily uh scratchable so um don't want to accidentally scratch the cap so um yeah i'm just keeping it in here for now uh, i do want to eventually get the pilot decimo um yeah that's my i guess my holy grail <laughs> it, can I say holy grail um, anyways holy grail currently um, okay so the next two pens I never used because it just didn't fit with my aesthetic yeah, they were gifts but I didn't want to give it away I didn't want to throw it away because I mean it still essentially is in my possession um, this one is the Big fat pen, and this one is the Jin Hao. And I don't remember if this was a copy of the Sailor. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, I mean, these are probably all like inspired knockoffs or something like that. But uh, yeah, the Nymphs is actually really pretty in here. Um, maybe I should start using this, but it's so thick and heavy, like. Uh, I don't really write well with thick pens. Uh, it's definitely not capable. It's very he uh, heavy on the back. Um, it's white. I don't know. I might... I should probably try using this. But that is a huge nib too. Um, it's in... What is this? It doesn't really say... Hmm. No, it's in... I don't know doesn't say um, but yeah I haven't used this because but it is gorgeous right um, but it's definitely made a it's very heavy pen so very 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 heavy um, I wonder what the nib size is like it didn't say so but that's that uh, and lastly this was also a gift and it's very heavy so I guess I just don't use um, I feel bad for not using these, but this is another Jin Hao, and I know this was a knockoff of, like, this $1,000 pen, but it's very, very, very heavy. Um, it's so heavy, and it's pretty, though. The nib is very pretty, and this is in a fine. It says a fine, and it's just so heavy, and I don't know. I feel guilty for not using it. And hanging on to it um oh it looks like the back has like threads so oh okay that's nice that's very nice um i don't know guys do you you know um have fountain pens that you don't use anymore or haven't used maybe they were gifted and you don't want to give them away i don't know i mean I mean, I'm keeping it because there's sentimental reasons or behind this. So I'm definitely not going to, you know, get rid of it. It's sentimental and I'm definitely keeping it. So 
Hey guys, so I completely forgot one pen. I can't believe it, but and it is in this um little cute leather pen sleeve uh that I got off of AliExpress and surprisingly it is very well made and uh it's like this teal uh pouch here with this brass little closure. Uh it's really cute and soft. I really, really like the leather on this. And let's open it up and keep it in here because I don't want to like damage it or mix it in with my other pens because I don't really use it that much. But it's very, very patinaed and might need polishing, but I like it the way it is. So let's just get started. It's the Parker... Uh, what is this again? Parker 75? I think it's... I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, yeah, so that is it right here. And it is very, very patinaed. I haven't really been using it that much. I did try to polish it um, lightly. Um, but I know that you can damage it, the gold plating if you don't polish it the right way so I pretty much just left it I know it will shine itself up when I do start using it uh, let's take a look at the nib so I cleaned it out several times and I did try to polish the nib it was very um, very rusted not rusted but uh, yeah I just needed some polishing up and here's a closer look at it Yeah, so um, it has this vacuum. Is this um, a vacuum mechanism here? I'm not sure if that's what you call it, um, but you just you squeeze it and then it just there's a suction um, when you release and then the ink just draws in from the bottom of the nib. And I don't want to damage this part, so I've never tried to pull it out. I know you probably can, but I'm not going to do that. It's a very delicate piece of plastic. Um, but so yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't have it inked up right now, and I have used it. It's very comfortable in the hand and very easy to cap at the back. Um, but I just like to just keep it um in my collection because it's very sentimental and special um so yeah um someone passed this down to my father so and he passed it down to me so this is very special uh and i just keep it there and i just had to add this or it wouldn't be considered a full collection video so i can't believe i forgot this but that is it so i will continue the rest of the video here so that's pretty much it and i hope this video you know if you're listening still then thank you so much um this is my longest video and i don't know how i'm going to edit this and when it's going to go up but it's going to go up either next week but I'm trying my best to upload this um, but I will end it here if you have any questions let me know below if you have want to see anything uh, specific if you have any requests for any videos uh, please let me know um, I do these videos to share with you guys um, you know want to be part of this community so just let me know uh, what you think down below um, yeah thank you so much for watching and I will end it here and I will see you guys next time.